Okay, so let's look at the next function. The next function is call. And let's just again start by reading the definition. So the definition of call is that it returns the result of calling its first argument with the remaining arguments. And then they say that this is occasionally useful as a converging function for r.converge. The first branch can produce a function while the remaining branches produce the values to be passed to that function as its arguments. And actually, I can, from my own experience, say that actually that was useful. That was a useful tip because I've actually used it that way. But we will see. I mean, converge is not the next function, right? The next function is chain and then clamp and then clone and then comparator and then complement and then compose. <laughs> Both gay, let's be. Concat, <laughs> oh my god, okay, There's so many functions. I was hoping that, yeah, okay, so here's converge, right? So I was hoping that converge would be the next function, but clearly it was not. So uh, let's just go back to call was the function we were at, right? So so actually, let's not talk about converge now. Let's talk about converge when we get to converge, and, and I'll really try and remember to talk about call when we get to converge. But for now, let's just focus on call, right? So so that means we don't really have to think about this uh, this second portion where they say this, uh, this is occasionally useful blah, blah, blah. Instead, we have to think about this first portion where, we, where they say that call returns the result of calling its first argument, which then, I mean, implies that the, implies that the first argument is a function. So it, it calls the first argument with the remaining arguments, right? So, so the first argument is a function and the remaining arguments are the arguments that we want to pass to that function. So if you look at the type definition here, it says that, okay, we're taking, ah, this is interesting. Actually, why is there a comma here? It's like we're taking two arguments. Ah, sorry, okay, so, so I'm misunderstanding this. It's like I should highlight it like this, right? So, so the first argument is this function that when given any a number of arguments, like this is a variadic function, potentially, it produces something of type A, that's the first argument. And the second argument, or the, the remaining arguments, hence the, the dot dot dot, are essentially the arguments that we want to pass to this function. And if we do that, we will get back something of type A, because type A is what this, this function produces, or things of type A is what this function produces. So usually when we have variadic functions, we've ha had a tendency of, of using math max. So, so let's use that again, right? So if we do console log math max 10, 20, 30, we'll get 30 back because 30 is the greatest number of all of those numbers. So let's say, let's use r.call, right? What we could do is we could say call math.max with the arguments 10, 20, 30, right? This should, this should somehow or be somewhat equivalent of, of the other thing, right? Then we also get 30. So actually, let, let's do these, let's, let's put this on a single line. Uh, so that we can sort of compare them. So uh, here it's math of max 10, 20, 30. Uh, yeah, that's correct, right? So, so here we're sort of invoking it ourselves, right? Like we're actually invoking the function. Here we could say, oh, we could uh, delete that and only say call math of max and then we'd get back a function. Oh, sorry, actually we get back infinity. Hmm. We get back infinity because we, this is not curried. So call is not curried, right? C call actually has an arity of at least two. So, so we need this argument, yes, but then we need at least one argument here or, or parameter here. So without, I mean, maybe not at least, but the point is that even if we don't supply, ah, oh, okay, maybe I should put it this way. Actually, sorry, it's not at least. Probably, probably the case is this, that the function that we pass as the first argument will definitely be invoked. We can't partially apply it. So if we pass no arguments here after this first argument, Ramda will assume that it's a nullary function. Like it will assume that it's a constant. And, and it will simply invoke it without passing any arguments. And, and actually, I mean, if, if you think about that, if we, if we run console log math dot max, just the, well, what happens if we, yeah, but then we get, yeah, oh, sorry, not the function math max, but the invocation of the function without passing any arguments, right? Then we get negative infinity. So, so actually, this is the default behavior of, of math max within JavaScript. And so that's what we're seeing when we do r.call on math max without passing any arguments. Again, because we can't partially apply it. Oops, sorry, I've messed up the alignment of this window. So yeah, we can't, we can't do it this way. So we can't expect a function back and then pass the arguments. This will probably blow up, right? Which is the, which it does. So it says, 
this is not a function what we get back so we have to remove this stuff and do it like this we have to actually supply the arguments and of course I mean we could supply uh, any number of arguments here that would still work so so in some sense this is again one of one of these super simple methods like if we would just construct our own implementation of this so the first argument is a function and then we have some args and sorry I'm, I'm probably not skilled enough in JavaScript to realize that there are easier ways of doing this so there probably are easier ways of doing this but never mind I mean this this should probably work like if we collect all of the arguments and we have a function then what we do is essentially that we run the function uh, with the spreading of the arguments something like that right so so our own version is the second thing that we can so log here and we could then say call math dot max with 20 and 100 so it's the same thing as the first one actually let's let's uh, replace this 20 and 100 with uh, 10 20 30 so we're passing the same thing all over the board uh, yeah then we get 30 30 30 so actually our own implementation works as well and of course again this is very addict so we could keep passing arguments and then we get 40 here in the in the, in the middle uh, probably though they're not doing it this way they're probably doing and let's actually look that look at that as i as i mentioned before when we talked about another function what's pretty neat about ramda is that they have both call and they have apply and what's cool about that is that javascript the java i mean the native javascript library has the function call and it also has Let's see if I've got this in my history. Yeah, it also has apply. And the difference between call and apply is that if, I mean, if we look here at apply, right? Like they invoke apply with uh, the context of this, which was what we were talking about in that other video, and then the arguments within an array or as an array. But then they will be, they will invoke the function, uh, which in this case is math.min, they will invoke that by passing them as separate arguments. But when calling apply, we give all of the arguments in an array. And when we do call, we pass we pass the arguments separately. So here, right? So product.call, and they pass the context of this, and then they pass the first argument and the second argument as separate arguments. So, anyways, I mean, if if we then um, go back here to the to the specification of of the apply function, oh, actually, sorry, we weren't at apply, we were at call. So if we go to call, and then we look at the source code, uh, we can see that they use. Uh, apply here so so they're exporting here what whatever is in the variable call and call contains a current version of the function that's called call uh, which accepts a single argument which is presumably then a function but it's called uh, fn and this fn they simply call apply on and then so they apply this function within the context this and then they do this sort of shenanigans with the uh, arguments uh, object or or sorry i think it's array like object right so so i'm not well versed in in, in javascript enough to, to to explain exactly what's going on here but i think this has something to do with the history of javascript and how the arguments keyword doesn't necessarily refer to or not necessarily i mean doesn't refer to an array uh, containing the arguments but it refers to something which is array like so i think they're doing this to sort of turn it into an array but i may be completely wrong here but anyways i mean so, so in some sense it wasn't too strange so that's essentially the call uh, function so if we're back here in the docs right so here's a simple example where they where they uh, use a call to to add up one and two using the add method uh, or the, the add method from Ramda. and then all of this is an example of when they're using converge they're constructing an example of using call and converge so um, if you're interested in that definitely dig into converge and then and then let's and then look at that i mean the short answer is just that what converge does is that it takes one argument which is a function and then a second argument which is an array uh, of functions and then it produces a new function where if you pass uh, some data to that it will take that data and run that data through all of the different functions in the array in, in the array so it will apply all of the functions in the array to the data that you passed and the results of applying those functions will make up the arguments that you pass to this first to this first function and, and that's why it's called converge because like this first function that you pass is sort of the convergence function like you 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 run multiple different functions with some data or you apply multiple different functions to some to some data and then that constitutes your argument arguments that you then pass through some convergence function that provides you a single value right because what are you going to do you have an array of multiple values but then you need to converge down to a single value um, but now we're getting into converge anyway and, and then the reason you would use 
call here is that, I mean, remember call says that, okay, the first argument is the function that I want to run and the second, uh, and, and the following arguments are my arguments to that function. So, so then this thing that you have here, like the first thing you have in your array might be a function that you want to produce, but that function depends not only on, or essentially it depends on something within your data. So you need to, you need to construct that function by, by looking at the data. You can only construct the function by, by looking at the data, uh, which is why you need to include it in this array because it needs to be given the data. Because call here, like the convergence function in, in, in converge, isn't given the data. Right? It's just given all of these arguments. But if you use call here, then, then this function or the convergence function will essentially be calling the first function right, with the, the remaining uh, arguments or the, the remaining, the results of applying the remaining functions, where this first function that we produced essentially will be produced. right? It's, it's a function that, that's produced from applying the data. So the expectation is that this thing, when applied to some data, will not produce a value, but will produce a function. But then again, functions are values. But I mean, essentially, the, the type of that thing is that it has to be a function. But yes, that, that's way too much about, about Converge. We'll talk about this again when we get to Converge, but that's how you can use call. Anyways, let's move on uh, away from call. That's call.